Hello everyone and welcome to Global Accessibility Day. Uh, I should say Global Accessibility Awareness Day. I knew I'd get that wrong right from the start. <laughs> it's a lot to be uh, talking about. My name's Alan. I'm part of the discovery team here at Three. Um, we are quite a small team within the business, but it's our remit normally to be out and about within the community teaching people key digital skills. Um, but because it's Global Accessibility Awareness Day, we thought we'd do something a little bit different. And if you tuned in earlier on YouTube, you would have noticed a couple of colleagues of mine. Um, so we had uh, Jess this morning talking about accessibility features in both Android and iOS devices, and that was wholly centered around vision. Um, so people with um, vision impairment and how a device can really support that. And then just before me, you would have seen Emma that was talking about hearing impairments. And again, how your devices, be it a smartphone or a tablet, can really support ensuring that you are totally inclusive in using devices like these. Um, so as part of the celebrations today, we thought we'd go the extra mile. Um, we've got another two streams available for you. So this one, which is gonna be me talking about uh, people with physical or dexterity impairments and how you can use your device to sort of really make the most of digital technology. And then at one o'clock, we've got the lovely Ali who is joining us as part of the Three Live team, who you might see on the Three website normally um, and she's going to be talking about some various apps that she likes to use which will support people with cognitive impairments and also other disabilities like um, ADHD or ASD as an example. Um, so we really look forward to that one. Uh, it's very close to Ali's heart as well um, and she's got some really special things lined up for you. So I think the thing about um, accessibility or disabilities is that not every disability is obvious, um, so I think this is why the, the stuff that we've done so far today is really important. Um, and I think the other thing to call out as well, it's not always permanent, um, which I think some people think that is the case. So the things that both Jess and Emma have showed you earlier are essentially there for everybody. It may not be that you've got a visual impairment that will last you for the rest of your life. It might just be something that's indeed temporary. Uh, and what they've shown you is how you can really make the most out of your device and still continue to use them, even if you've got something that's preventing you at that moment in time. And the thing about the physical impairment is much the same, actually. It could be that I might have fallen over and broken my wrist, as an example, and using a device becomes very difficult. But equally, it could be something along the lines of someone that has Parkinson's disease or um, arthritis and things like that. Um, but what it means is that the manufacturers out there, people like um, Google with some of their settings and Apple with some of their settings as well, ensure that the devices that you purchase are inclusive from that point of view. So I've got a few things lined up for you. Um, hopefully some of the things that you see today might be a little bit of a surprise. Um, I'm trying to think outside the box a little bit. Um, and equally, some of the things that you might be aware of. But I want to show you how you can potentially use these, not just if you have a temporary or a permanent disability, it might be something that you can utilize within a device. It just makes life a lot easier. And that's the whole point of this. Um, if you didn't see the streams that we broadcast earlier on today, they are up there on the 3UK YouTube channel. Um, so do make sure you go and have a, a little look at those. And please do um, give us a like and also subscribe if you're really loving what we're doing. Um, and as we come towards the end of this broadcast, I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about the discovery team, what we do and how potentially you can get involved in some more of the stuff that we love to showcase. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start off with um, the webcam in just a second. I'm just going to talk you through some of the key things that we're going to feature today. We're going to talk a little bit around switch access and ultimately what that means. So sometimes you might come across an accessibility uh, feature like that and think, well, what does this mean? Um, so we'll, we'll have a little bit of an overview. Unfortunately, we can't demonstrate how that works because it requires secondary equipment. Um, but if you know of anybody that might benefit from that, then switch access or switch connected devices are amazing and they can, they can really change people's lives. After that, we're going to have a look at um, an Apple tablet, which I've got in front of me here. And we're going to talk a little bit about assistive touch, um, which always makes me smile a little bit because... Um, it's something that was used quite a lot back in the day where maybe buttons didn't work properly. Um, but let's show you how you can use those to, the, to an advantage, actually, to the best of your ability. 
Um, if you have any physical impairments with your hands, for example, that make touching buttons really hard, assistive touch is a bit of a no-brainer as far as I'm concerned. Um, so we can go in and have a little look at that. We're going to take a look at um, an Android device that I've got in front of me as well, and we're going to look at reachability. Um, so for example, if you don't have dexterity with your thumbs and your fingers, reachability is a, a really great little feature. It's very easy to activate. Um, and it's available on most Android devices as well. And I love it. I think it's great for me, especially if I want to try and use my hand, my hand, my device one handed. Um, so we'll, we'll take a little look at that as well. Um, then we're going to have a look at touch accommodations as well. Now, this is particularly useful um, if you have anything um, to do with uh, nervousness in your hands, for example. Parkinson's is a great example for this. If you can't hold your hand still for any length of time, that doesn't stop you from using your Device, we can still go ahead and show you how you can use um, your tablet and your phones. Then we're going to look at some other features on Android which include motion control um, and also uh, voice control. So if you are in a situation where you really find it difficult to hold a device, let's think about how we can just do little movements with our device to make it do certain things and we can use our voices to do that as well. So that's pretty cool. Um, and then lastly, um, you wouldn't have seen this already today, but we are going to take a little look at uh, voice assistant and how we can use voice assistant and also keyboard dictation as well. <laughs> Let's just show you quickly how all this works. Now, the settings menu on most devices will always look to be the same. It resembles a cog, so even if it's on a phone or a tablet, um, you'll also tend to see this as well on something along the lines of a computer, a laptop, or something like that. So you're looking for this one, which is the COG. And they're very clearly laid out now that you'll have an accessibility uh, setting or an accessibility menu. And we'll find that just over here. And when I tap on it, the good thing about the, and, or the, sorry, the Apple stuff is that it is laid out very clearly. So we've got vision at the top. We come into the physical and fine motor skills hearing and some of the other general stuff as well. So first of all, we're going to go into um, the switch controls. Now, switch controls are not always entirely obvious when people do have switch controls. So one of the ones that we often call out when we do the accessibility sessions with Discovery is for someone like Stephen Hawking, for example, how was he able to communicate um, how was he be able? How was he able to use digital technology? Well, actually, that was all done through switches, um, and switches can take on many different forms. So, a switch can be used on a wheelchair, for example, in in form of a joystick, or some people actually would use an iPad um, to have some sort of joystick or rotation system built onto the screen. So. If you cannot hold, for example, a joystick and move it, but you can still use a finger around the screen, then the switch control could be used on an iPad or a phone to move something like a wheelchair around. So what happens is, is that you need to obviously have the switches in the first place. And this goes for the same for both Apple and, uh, sorry, Apple and Android devices, that once the switch control is in play, you would turn it on and then you would go to add switches. Um, so they could be something that is controlled by Bluetooth, or you might have a physical switch. And what this is showing me here is that I need to then go through the process of either choosing one of these options. Okay, so if I go to add a switch, this will give me some different things. I could add a camera, I could ha have a screen, I, my iPad screen could also be a switch, or I could choose to have something external. And what this will do is it will then say, okay, this device will have some form of connectivity, so all we need to do is turn it on, and these are the key things. And then once it's found, it will show up on my screen and it will give me the ability to interact with that particular device. So I did say we'd just talk you through that, um, but do think about some of the key um, devices that you might be able to buy uh, or use to help your life that much better. I'm just coming over to my Android device as well. Let me just put that a little bit more centrally. And again, just like the Apple one, as we scroll through here, you'll notice there is a whole setting specifically for accessibility. And then what you'll see further down is that we have all of these different uh, things here. So um, we've got one-handed mode, we've got the motion and vision control, which I said we'll go through in just a moment. And then we've got our, our main accessibility menu, which among here has the interaction control of switch access. So it doesn't matter if it's Apple 
or your Android, you do have switch access control on both. Perfect, okay, let's put that to one side just for a second, and then I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about um, assistive touch. So if we just go into the touch menu on here, you'll see there's five, five sort of main uh, menu features within this, and assistive touch is right at the very top. Now I did joke about this a little bit earlier in the fact that a lot of people that might have had early Apple technology have come across the assistive touch menu, uh, and the reason being is that on some of the earlier devices, this little home button here, this little kitty here, if you like, went a little bit rogue and stopped working. Um, and then rather than make the device completely redundant, what it allowed us to do is say, okay, well, we can actually put something on the screen that will still allow us to control the device. And this is a really great feature for someone that finds it very difficult to push buttons like this one, which is our home button, or there's one at the top of the device just here, which is our power button. And sometimes, you never know, you might want to do something like take a screenshot, for example, where you have to press both of these together. Well, the great thing about the assistive touch is it actually makes these bits redundant. You don't need them anymore. So let's have a little look and see what we can do. So we're going to touch on that. And as you can see, it's not switched on at the moment. We will know it's switched on because this little menu, menu here will toggle and it will go green just like some of the other ones down here. Um, so once we turn it on, you should notice straight away that we have assisted touch coming up just on the main screen. And it goes grey after a short period of time. You can change that if you want to. Once it's idle, we can move it around into a position where we're more comfortable with it. And there we go. Now the other thing that we have is that when we tap on it, it will then give us a window that opens up and it tells us what we can actually activate within this. And the beauty of this is it's customizable. So you can go in and you can actually change what you see just here. Um, and you'll notice, I think, with um, what Jess was doing earlier with the vision, she was using a feature called Speak Screen, for example. And if I was to activate that accessibility feature from the assistive touch menu, it means I can tap on areas of the screen and the device will talk back to me. So it's kind of encompassing both a, um, a dexterity uh, accessibility need and also a visual one at the same time. So I think that is really good from that point of view. So let's have a little look at this and just show you what it will do. So for example, if I just tap on home, it should then take me straight back into my home screen. I don't have to press this button. Um, I don't have to press any other button. I've just done it from the assistive touch menu. I can go in and I can have a look, for example, at my notifications, which there's probably too many for my liking just there. That's cool. Um, I've also got the control center, which is something that normally pops up in the in the corner. And again, that for some people might be very difficult to activate because the normal way of doing it is actually running a gesture across the screen where you place your finger at the top and pull down. But if you don't have the ability to hold your finger on the screen like that, then that makes that difficult. Whereas the assistive touch feature, however, makes that very easy. Whoops, I pressed the wrong one there, didn't I? I press the notification. And again, we can just tap on like so. We can also look at changing between apps that we've used before. So the app switcher, once the device is in fact unlocked, let's just do it there, will show me apps that were open before, like so, and I can go through and I can close these apps down accordingly. So it is a nice feature, but like I said, the nice thing about this is that you can customize it, okay? So we can come into the section underneath, press on customize, and at the moment, it's showing me that I've got um, eight key icons. I can add more if I wanted to. So let's go for number nine. And no, I can't, can't add more. I do apologize. Yes, I can. It's just there. We press the plus button, and then we can add on here what we would like to see. So there's all different things, some of which are actually located or specified as part of the accessibility menu. So we can scroll up. We can change volume. I think that's a really good feature to have. So sometimes if we can't hear properly, rather than try and access the buttons on the side, and on this particular iPad, this is in a case, so you should see they're actually not very easy to touch. So by having that in the um, assistive touch menu just makes it that much easier. And then maybe, of course, I might want to have um, a, um, a volume down button as well. So you can add all of that in. So that is the nice part of that. Super. Um, as you can see, there's other things as well that we can go through when it comes to the assistive touch uh, top menu. 
Um, you can change um, and have things like an on-screen keyboard that could be really useful for you anytime. Um, we also have the ability to um, show how it all tracks on the screen. So at the moment it's going relatively slow, um, but I could actually speed it up so it moves around much faster. And that's tracking beyond my finger there as well. Whoops, let me just come back into there. Um, and it also allows us to create gestures. So for example, a gesture would be that if I swipe my finger across the screen, I can get the iPad to perform an action off the back of that. So it's a bit like an if this, then that um, specified thing. So if I do this, then that happens is the way that I would look at that one. So there we go. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just going to show you um, the reachability feature within my Android device. Um, and there's a couple of key things to this actually, which I can show you. Um, I am terrible at using my device one-handed. As you can see, I don't have the reach within my thumb. So for example, if I'm holding my device, trying to access my camera one-handed, there is a very high chance that I'm going to drop it. So what I can do here is I can actually use the uh, sort of the multitasking bar along the bottom to allow me to do just that. So if I swipe across it like so, you can see it's now minimized that screen and now I therefore find it much easier and it's reachable. So if I'm left-handed or right-handed, then I can change that accordingly. I'm gonna swipe across the bottom again. That just makes it go the other way. But if I swipe from the right to the left this time, it then sits it down into that location. So again, I know it's a much smaller screen, but it does mean that if I wanted to, I can then access any of the key features on my device. Um, and it's very useful as well because phones or some smartphones now are getting larger and larger. So it does make it much more difficult to use a device one-handed. So um, nice little simple little trick for you. Um, and that's something that if you've never seen before and you happen to have an Android device, just give it a go. It could be that it's a feature within your accessibility menu that you need to switch on. Um, on this one, mine's always been accessible to me. Um, so, But if you're curious enough to have a look, and that's generally what Discovery is all about, being curious enough to have a little wander around your device and have a look at some of the key features that are there. Mine actually is listed down as one-handed mode, which therefore then gives me the reachability. And as you can see, it describes exactly what you can do, <clears throat> losing my voice, to be able to access that. Um, another key call out actually is if you do have an Android device and you like to type one handed, certain keyboards also have the ability to give you reachability when you're typing as well. So let me just um, quickly show you what it would be like if I was to start chat like that. Um, and if I was to start a chat, let me just type a message to Jess, for example, my colleague from earlier today. There we are. And I'll just quickly show you what I mean. So um, on my keyboard, I do have the ability sometimes to just actually um, swipe it across or move it. So we've got the option for one-handed, just like so. And as you can see, the keyboard now is much, much smaller. So I'm just gonna turn the brightness down a bit so you guys can see this much easier. Swipe that out. So now, as you can see, my keyboard's much smaller because I've chosen the one-handed mode. And that's done just from the little ellipses that you can see here. So it's in one-handed and I've changed it now. Let me just show you that again, back into one-handed. Um, and it's made that a lot smaller. I can actually reverse it. So again, if I'm left-handed or right-handed, it gives you that. Um, and it also gives you the ability to have a floating keyboard as well, which is if I go back into one-handed by pressing this, I can then move it around to have it where I want it. So it's entirely up to me. And I think if I remember rightly, we should be able to move it completely. And you should be able to get it into a floating mode. Let's just pop that back on to there. Excellent. Okay, so what we're going to be talking about now is how you can look at the touch accommodations on iOS. Now, touch accommodations are specifically there for people that cannot hold uh, a finger on the screen for any length of time. So 
you can imagine what happens actually, and I can kind of do a bit of a demonstration by holding up this device, is that a, an iPad or an iPhone or an Android smartphone or tablet, it doesn't matter, they're meant to be very reactive to your touch. Um, so as soon as you tap on something, the lightest of touch, it will go in and it will access that feature. Imagine if you kept doing that accidentally, that would be an absolute nightmare. So by having touch accommodations in, it actually means you can set a specific time of how long you need to hold something for before you can operate it. So let's show you how we're gonna do that now. So we're gonna go back onto the webcam, just spin this round. Um, it's worth noting actually, the features on this are very similar for both Apple and Android. So when we tap on here, I'm going to just quickly go back and you'll see, actually, let me just turn the assistive touch off for the moment. You'll see touch accommodations here. And it, it, the good thing about this is it, it kind of tells you exactly what to expect. And it says if you have trouble using the touch screen, you can adjust some settings. Um, and this will talk to you or tell you how long it will take before the screen will react to you. So um, I'm not going to turn it on just because it doesn't really make any difference here. But the whole duration is set to four seconds. Now, ultimately, that will mean is that if I wanted to use, for example, my camera app and my touch accommodations were switched on, I would have to use on hold my camera app for four seconds before, in fact, it will open. And that is the purpose of that. This one here, where it says ignore repeat, um, if, for example, you had a hand that was very shaky, the last thing you want is it to react to your touch every time. So actually what we can do is we can set the device so it ignores the multiple touches and it will just treat that as one touch and one touch only. So actually this is indeed a great feature. So let me just see if I can show you exactly what I mean with this. And I'll just drop this down to two seconds just to make it a little bit more obvious. Um, on my home screen, and I'm just going to simply open up my camera app. You probably won't see anything because my camera is covered up by my case. But in this instance, I'm simply giving it a very quick tap and you can see it opens. Now, if I go into my settings menu and turn the accommodations on, what this will mean then is that I can go back to my home screen and if I tap the camera button, can you see nothing's happening? And that means it won't activate. But what it does do is if I hold my finger on it, it kind of puts like a timer around my finger. Watch this. There you go. And that's telling me, right, two seconds is long enough now to, there we go. I can take a photo. Exactly that. So it's actually showing me the amount of time that I need to be spending on the screen before it will take a photo. There we go. It did that just a minute ago because I have the resistive touch on as well, which is like a 3D menu. So the more I push it, the other features will pop up as well. So I'm going to go in and just turn that off. I forgot then that I have to hold that one as well for two seconds. <laughs> um, let me just quickly go on and go back into my settings menu. There we go. And again, you've got to do the same thing. So two seconds on that, and there we go. We switched it off and we've disabled it as well now. Um, and the other thing that you have as well is that there is an accessibility feature within the home button on here. Um, so Jess kind of touched on it when she was tapping the screen earlier for the visual settings. You can actually control this button that if you tap it three times, you can then move into some of the accessibility features as well. So that brings that into um, an accessibility mode with that. Now, as I said, the um, touch accommodations are also on Android devices as well. And again, you'll find them within the accessibility features. Um, and in this case, it's literally just called touch and hold delay. So if we go down here, at the moment, it's, it's not as comprehensive as, as the Apple menu, but it basically means you can either have a short, medium or long hold. So depending on how, uh, how dexterous you are or what's happening with um, your hands, you can choose to change the length of how long it is that you need to press something before it actually carries out the action as well. So the end result is the same. Um, the process is just slightly different. So that's one of the, the key things that I would call out there. 
So folks, we've only got a few minutes left of our physical session here on YouTube. So I am gonna just take you through um, another key feature, um, which is actually built into my Android device. Um, and it's something that I think is, is a really cool thing to have. Um, and it's all done on motion control and also voice control as well. Um, so you can actually command your device to do things even whilst you're sitting on your hands, so to speak, as well. So um, some of you guys may have heard of OK Google, or you may have heard of uh, Siri as well. Um, and those, those are your typical voice assistants. And often is the case that we only ever use them for finding out what the weather's like, which is fine. You can do that. And we live in um, great British uh, weather, so I wouldn't blame you for doing that, because one day it could be raining, the next day it could be sunny, and the following day it could be... <laughs> snowing with 10 foot snow so what a lot of people don't realize is you can put the voice assistants definitely to their test when it comes to using voice control um, so let's have a look at the android here and then it is a case of simply going in and just taking a look to see what you can do we've got two things motion and voice okay um, and with motion this will give me things that i can do with my device just quick actions, and this is really cool actually. Um, so for example, if my phone's ringing, I didn't want it to ring anymore, I could simply flip it over and that will mute my device. So it means it stops ringing. Um, and that's what I said right at the very beginning. Remember, some of these features aren't just for people that have got um, a physical disability. You might think, actually that is a great thing because if I'm in a business meeting and I've forgotten to mute my phone or put it on to uh, do not disturb mode, as soon as it starts ringing, flip it and we are good and that turns that off we've also got the ability on this to see what happens when you raise your phone so raise your phone or raise your device does actually hit, appear in both apple and android um, this will give me the ability to do things like reduce the call volume um, whilst you're lifting it up you can wake your device up so again it means you don't have to use your finger in order to maybe press a button to unlock it you can use that here as well it's also got a time function on that. And on some of them, uh, you also have the ability to lift your phone up and you're immediately in the call. So if someone's ringing you, you can pick it up and hello, yep, I'm here. Let's have that chat now. So that's quite nice little features. And you've got the raise to ear as well. So it can determine whether it's your ear or not, So which is pretty clever. Um, um, this is actually a Huawei device. Um, and this has got a couple of things on here as well called knuckle gestures, which means that I could use my knuckle instead of my finger on the screen. So if that was feasible for me to do so, then I can do things like open up apps by drawing a specific letter on the screen. I can do screenshots so I can show you what that looks like. Um, so for example, I take a knuckle and simply tap on the screen and you can see it's taken a screenshot just like that. And I think if I'm right, if I draw an S or something like that, you might have seen that, that now takes a scrolling screenshot as well. So I could scroll up and scroll it down or left to right and it would actually record that as a scrolling one. I think I set this up for a camera, but let's have a look. Uh, I didn't, but you can. And the great thing about that is completely customizable. So do, do remember that as well. Um, so a couple of key features from the accessibility point of view. And as you can see, there is a level of parity between Apple and Android, um, which I think is fabulous actually. It means that they're on somewhat of a level playing field. Um, and it means that technology is inclusive. And I think the thing about us and Discovery is that um, we've always maintained that we want to be as inclusive as, as we can. Um, that's why very much we love to do these YouTube broadcasts as well, because it's really important, I think, that we are, are finding ways of letting you know how you can discover more from your devices. And it means it doesn't matter what device you've got, how much money you've got to spend, or if you have a physical impairment, or a visual impairment, or a hearing impairment, or um, you struggle to use technology, there are things here that will help you all the time. Um, and as I said, you know, there's things like voice assistance. So even if you are really struggling to use the device at all, then why not get the device to do it for you? So for example, and I try and get people to do this, so if I sit on my hands, I could say, okay, Google, call Jess Discovery. And any minute now, her phone should possibly ring. I've not touched my phone at all and then it will go through to her in just a second so there's clever little things like that and equally if I wanted to send her a text message I can say text yes and I can read out a message and it will do it for her as well 
So folks, we have absolutely come to the end of our session uh, today. So I just wanted to say thank you very much for watching us. Um, that we are three streams down now. We've got one more to go with the fabulous Ali from our three live team. She's going to be coming up in about half an hour's time, so at one o'clock. Um, and she's going to be showcasing some of the key apps that are very close to her heart. And they really support um, things like um, people that are on uh, the autistic spectrum, so ASD, um, and also people with ADHD as well. Fabulous apps, things that she showcased before on, on the three live broadcast. Um, so do make sure that you tune in at one o'clock to watch out for her. Um, this is the 10th Global Accessibility Awareness Day. We're really proud to be supporting this as a business and as 3Discovery as well. I did say that we talk a little bit more about what 3Discovery is. Um, we're a small part of 3 where it's our remit to be out and about within the community teaching people both basic and foundation digital skills. We love to do it. We work with a lot of community groups. And as you can probably imagine, the last year has been very difficult and challenging for us to do so. Um, so we diversified, we upped our game a little bit more, and uh, we managed to reach out to many, many thousands of people actually on Zoom. Um, so we do have daily Zoom broadcasts where you can come along and you can learn new skills. And they're from the slight to the ridiculous. If you want to use a smartphone for the first time, you can join us for a session on that. Or if you want to uh, advance your photo editing skills, you can absolutely join us for a session on that. And if you just head on to our website, 3.co.uk forward slash discovery, uh, you can book one of our sessions or as many as you like, and every single one of them are free. We normally broadcast or stream, sorry, or we have four, four sessions a day uh, on most days. So there's something there for everybody. Um, that's it from me, folks. Um, once again, thank you very much for joining us and tuning in today. Uh, do make sure you're back here at one o'clock for Ali's stream. And we'll see you all again soon. Thanks very much. Bye for now.